so looking forward to tonight's mission. It's a dark and twisted little tale. Story of tragic deaths, multiple suicides, incest, family tragedy. I know, this place has it all. Countless sightings of cranky ghosts and vengeful spirits. It's so pretty during the day, but I'm actually pretty spooked about wandering through at night. Are you ready, guys? Welcome to Larnick Castle. Think about it and the tragedy behind this. Larnick was, he was wealthy, he had a great family, he was a, a uh, promising politician, yeah, mm -hmm. and he built the castle in 1871. And it all went downhill, didn't exactly. it? Exactly. Really? In 20 years, he, like, his two wives died, his favourite daughter died, he ended up um, committing suicide after going bankrupt. Then his, his son committed suicide 12 years later. After supposedly sleeping with his third wife. Oh. Yeah. It is so steeped in Not history. Not a particularly happy life or cheerful, really. Oh, those lions look like it they're is. watching you. The evidence from this place is just overwhelming. Oh, I've got the bajiggities. I know. It's <laughs> kind of got that feel. It's very cold up here, isn't it? Yeah. That wind is just whipping through. I might just let you guys go for a wander around. Um, soak up some of the atmosphere, check out the grounds. Michael, you're going to be talking to one of the owners who actually doesn't like living here, which sounds bizarre. Right, <laughs> OK. Yep, she'll tell you more. And, Caro, you're going to speak to some of the staff members who okay. have some very bizarre sightings and stories. Well, they would. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. Aww. So I'll leave you guys to it. I'm going to set up some cameras, and I'll meet you back in the van to suit up. Cool. Okay. See you okay. soon. Yep. Growing up, I always thought castles were romantic and the place where fairy tales were um, meant to happen. And then also learning a little bit about William Larnock, it's obviously the exact opposite of what happened in here. Even just in the daylight, looking up through the windows, it's just so dark behind there. And the, I remember the rooms being made of dark wood and just so dark and big. And just, I'm thinking now of going in there with a torch and everything's going to jump out at me just because of the shadows and a little bit apprehensive going in there. I think he had it all. He uh, then turned septic, a recluse, cantankerous, old bugger, and is probably locked up hiding in that castle. And uh, I want to go and find out. I think he's there. This is going to be a huge mission. I mean, we know Michael's penchant for wandering off unattended and Carolyn for, for freaking out in certain rooms. And I think my concern is that this place is just so huge that there's no way I'm going to have enough cameras to cover the whole thing. And if any of them get lost or need rescuing, there's just no way I can do it. Now, Sophie, your family owns Lana Castle and you were brought up here. So what was that like? Can you describe some of the experiences of, of living here and some of the, the energies that you may have felt here? The words that come to my mind when people always ask me is cold and scary. So, so what's it like growing up in a castle, you know? Is it like Cinderella, really romantic? And I go, cold and scary. And I did have one experience where I was there during the witching hour and I was on the telephone and I felt a presence come into the room and I thought oh, it was my brother coming home because half my mind was on my phone conversation. And then I just realised, no, you're by yourself. And I just put down the phone and ran. It wasn't a bad experience. It was just like there was someone else in the room with me. And that was the one that freaked me out the most. Right. Well, did any of the rest of your family while well, they were living here experience anything? We had a premiere of the play Larnock Castle of Lies in right. the Ballroom and when Larnock went to kill himself, this was like the highlight of the play, there was this big boom and all this light and noise and mum thought, oh, really great special effects and afterwards the actors were just because they had you know, they hadn't expected anything like this and spooky things had been happening and mum went to them afterwards, oh that was really great special effects when Larnock shot himself and they go, nah and it was thunder and lightning, and it just happened the only time that evening. It was right. very spooky. I was um, taking a travel writer around, Spanish travel writer, and she was a lovely woman, and we were talking about what it would have been like as a woman living in the castle in those days. And, mm. and we got talking about ghost stories and all the ghost stories we'd heard, and I said, well, if there's a ghost, I think it's Eliza. 
Because, I mean, Eliza had had the hard life here, really. The first her, wife. The first the wife. Set up and the whole yeah, thing. her money built the castle. She watched her son have an affair with her husband's third wife, and she watched her half sister marry. You know, her, her husband. husband. So she had reasons to be haunting. Mm. Anyway, uh, we, were, so we were laughing. We were laughing and joking. And I was walking down the stairs. Next thing, I felt like someone had pushed me. Like a physical step, like, like a, my hand. A, like yeah, a, like a very that. hard push in the middle of my back. And I probably went down about six or seven steps. And I was quite badly hurt. I was bleeding nose, cut lips, <sighs> grazed knees. And I was... You know, I was so very can, upset. Oh, heck. So they can actually physically touch, even well, though you can't see them. Well, that's what it felt like to me. OK, team, suiting up time. I'll get you to put your helmets on first. Now, these are both fitted with two cameras, one to show your point of view, and the other one that's going to capture all those moments of terror your eyes as you walk through. Just bear in mind guys that it's quite huge in there, there's a lot of rooms. I don't have cameras that cover every room so if you do wander off there's a good chance I won't be able to see you. Oh. We'll be into a radio contact though won't we so you'll be able to help us out and just give us a bit of direction while we're in there too. Yeah absolutely. Okay. Um, now I should tell you as well that there is supposed to be a big fog rolling in a little bit later <laughs> okay. on. Which could affect everything really, it condensation, or cameras, technical equipment, so we'll just bear that in mind. We'll see how it goes and uh, play it by ear. You guys all set? Yep. <sighs> see you soon. Go find Mr. Larnick. Oh no. After you. Thank you. Have fun. I feel like I'm in another century up here. From the very moment that this castle was built, William Lark's life, both personally and financially, basically started to fall around him. Uh, he used to be, from all accounts, a very honorable man, but eventually turning into a angry, frustrated recluse who sat up here in his castle that he built for himself uh, shunning his family, shunning everyone else, shunning society, uh, angry, despondent. I mean, this was a man that took a gun, put it to his face, and blew a hole in the back of his head. Open. I thought someone was trying to lock me in. Mr. William Larnick, methinks. Brad, are you with me? Yep, you should be coming onto my camera in just about two seconds. You're heading into the ante room, is that right? Yeah, that's right. You're actually in a part of the building where even the staff don't like to walk down because it's a real psychic hot spot and they often say that when you get to the ballroom doors there's they're really hard to open it's like there's a, a spirit pushing against it from the other side because they don't want you to go into the, into the ballroom hello oh blimey <sighs> so this is the ballroom this was a present for Larnock's favourite daughter, Kate, her 21st birthday, and sadly, five months after her 21st birthday, she died of typhoid. It's a very sad story. Must have broken Larnock's heart. Some people say in here, they still hear sounds of laughter and parties, but after Kate died, Larnock never came back in here. <laughs> Do you want to just take like a temperature reading while you're in there? How's this for a temperature reading? I can see the frost coming out of my mouth. OK, 
Carolyn, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you just head back into the um, back into the ante room for me and just take a photo if you don't mind? There was just like an orb just floating through through shot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, taking taking the photo now. I'm actually finding this very difficult because for some reason, and we haven't had it had it on any of our locations before, but there's a lot of interference in these cameras, which is going to make it very difficult when Caroline gets upstairs. It may actually have something to do with the incredible fog that's around tonight. This is the second floor. Now, it's on this very floor that basically William Larnock was delivered the final punch that sent him over the edge. His third wife, uh, Constance, who was over 20 years, his junior, and his eldest son, Douglas, were having a uh, fear. Now, when William Larnock found this out, he was absolutely devastated. It basically sent him over the edge into a massive depression, which he never recovered from. I just had all the hairs go up on the back of my neck again. Mr. William Larnick, where are you? Come and show yourself, Mr. William Larnick. I just heard a noise in the other end of the building. Did you hear anything? No, not at all. I didn't pick up anything on the cameras either. OK, I'm just imagining things, I hope. Every step I take, I have to force myself to do it. There's these blinking old clocks in this old building again. Oh, no, it's okay, it's just my shadow. I come in peace. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is a very horrible room. It's dedicated in memory of Larnock's youngest third wife. But they say it's haunted by Eliza Jane, his first wife, quite possibly because she's feeling like this should be her space, which is fair enough, she was the first wife. What the hell is that? I hope you can hear me, William Larnock, because if you can, come out. I, uh, I want to meet you. I'm walking around in circles here. I'm a bit disorientated. There's a, there's a chair and a table in the big drawing room, basically, with nothing else in it except for a piano. I'm just going to sit down in this chair. I presume this was William's chair where he would have sat. Oh! I kind of can't do much until he comes back into screen and into walkie-talkie range, because he's gone deep into the depths there somewhere that I can't locate him. Mr. William Larnock, are you here? Can you hear me, William? I call the ghost of William Larnock if you're here. Okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Just got a um just got a real shiver over my spine and a brush of cold air just coming through on me right now, basically. But, um yep. 
I don't know which room I'm in here. Yeah, that's starting to get a little bit weird because you're breaking up on the um, walkie-talkie as well. I'm kind of losing you on everything. just shut way after I left the room. Bye-bye, <sighs> William. Thank you for letting me visit Eliza. Just let me walk down the stairs alone without being... Good morning. Oh. All right, guys, what is this I hear about handprints on the window or something that I've missed? Ugh. What is that? Well, it was, I'd already been in Larnick's bedroom and it was on my way out. I thought I'll go and have another look and I noticed there were handprints like this on the window. What is that? Handprints? Yes. How do you explain that? It's on the outer window, so it's not even from inside the room. Oh, yeah, there's like two layers of glass, isn't there? And that was on the outside of the outside layer. <gasps> Uh-huh. All that's out there is a roof. Yeah, that is pretty freaky, isn't it? Who would be trying to get into Larnick's bedroom? Larnick? One of his three wives? It was bizarre. So much so that I actually went up and took a photo. Mm. Just so I could have I'm a glad you did. I got the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> you ran quick Pretty smart. Pretty pranky swat. But that's what I came up with. It's just awesome. And those handprints only came out once the fog rolled in, it's like the condensation on the window. Picked them up. Suddenly brought them out of nowhere. Because you didn't see them the first time you went through. No, I didn't see them at all. That's what surprised me the second time. I was like, what the heck? And it is on the f second floor. Uh -huh. And there's... Oh, you can see the is roof. There's a, a roof. Right, so there's a considerable drop, though, underneath it. It wouldn't be logical yeah. to be outside there with your hands up against the pane. But no. why would someone want to get in through the window anyway? Unless it was Larnick himself trying to get into his bedroom. This photo here, Carolyn, it's not anything to do with paranormal activity, it's just one of those tricks of the eye. But it's very cool to talk about because this is the last photo that was ever taken of William Larnick. And that picture is what you see when you first walk into the ballroom because it's right up the other end. Mm. And that's around about the size that you would see it too. From a distance when it's this small it looks like a skull. It does, eh? Yeah, it really it looks like a skull. But it's so bizarre that the last shot ever taken of him from a distance looks like a skull. And this is the picture that freaks out most of the staff at Larnock Castle. They just don't like going into the ballroom. Speaking of screams and being scared, Michael. Not me. <laughs> definitely was you. <laughs> Remember you went into a room and I didn't know where you were? Yes. Study room, I think. Oh. Now, this is you actually sitting at his table. I just wanted to sit. I mean, this was very much his room, I guess. It felt very masculine and I wanted to sit down on his desk and see if I could sort of summon up something or feel what it would be like to... Sit in his room and... Oh, ah, ah, fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. That's a technical term. <laughs> just, got a, um, just got a real shiver over my spine and a brush of cold air just coming through on me right now, basically. It was amazing. As I was in there, it wasn't like it was just coming from behind me. It was whirling all around me. Front, back, side. It was like a gust of wind just whooshing around yeah. me. Like a cold energy everywhere. I think I spin around and I've got my torch. And I'm kind of trying to see if I can see anything, but I can't. But it was yep. literally like whirling around me while I was in there. We're going to walk off to take some photographs. You actually ended up taking a photo here of the doorway. And I'm going to show you the photo that you ended up taking, which is quite exceptional. Wow. It's quite oh, exceptional. It's like a person. There's a, and I'd say that to me is like an apparition, but not a full figure. But it looks like a full a, figure. But, but you know what I mean? Not a solid form. <laughs> yeah. A, an apparition of And something. you can almost see a, a hat, mm -hmm. if you like. Yep. Someone in an overcoat hunched over in the doorway. It, and this is, sorry, when I'm standing further back in the room and I was facing out towards the doorway, the doorway after I just summoned him. Yep. 
So basically what I did was just change the colour and, and the balance and the contrast just so I could see what was around it, which made it sort of come out a little bit, a little, little bit clearer like that. And then finally, I did that. I changed the levels even further just wow. so I could get just the figure and the light. No life, way. And that's Sounds it. like you came to visit. I'm a ghost hunter, guys. I'm fully <laughs> alive just doing my ghost hunting stripes right there. So whatever you said to him, it certainly worked because there he is standing in the doorway. That's amazing. It's cold enough without just sending shivers up my spine like that just did, so what do you say we leave Larnick Castle and Mr. William Larnick in peace? I hope he doesn't Michael. follow us. Good one, Michael. I'll drive quickly. <laughs> i got to tell you, that was pretty hard evidence, to be perfectly honest. I was questioning Michael's technique halfway through the night, thinking, why would you go in there and antagonise a ghost? But when you get that sort of result, it's all good. I guess I gave myself a mission. Uh, to, to find Larnick. Something about him pushed my buttons, and so I just decided that I was going to go after him, and I thought if I did this, maybe it would be a good chance to evoke him to come out and, you know, present himself, and I think it worked. When you're in that environment, the first thing you want to do is get the hell out. You don't want to stick around and see what's going on, but something definitely was in that place.